mama told me when I was young. Come sit beside me, yeah, my only son. Well, listen closely. Yeah. Hey y'all, welcome again to another episode of Leonard Skinner Shorts where my brother and I talk about our favorite rock band of all time, Leonard Skinner. So you may be wondering, has Johnny Van Zant emailed us or called us or anything? No. So, I don't know. We're still working on him. He'd be a lot of fun to talk to, as well as some of y'all. Y'all have been talking to us, and so we're going to have some fan stuff probably in Season 2 to help us, you know, learn and also share your experiences. But today, uh, Joe came up with an idea for today, right? Yep. I'll tell you what, I reached out. To my long lost rock and roll brother, Jonathan Murphy, he suggested we talk about Ed King. Ed King is somebody we don't talk about that much. Ed King? He's not even from the South. He's not from the South, <laughs> but he blended in pretty well. You're right. It's hard to know where we'd be without Ed King. I mean, so let's just start off a little bit about where Ed came from and kind of what happened to get them together. Well, he's a California kid. He started playing. When he was 17, he joined the band. He joined Strawberry Alarm Clock. Strawberry Alarm Clock at 17. And he got himself going. And they played a little bit. And their lead singer actually never did join the band. So really awkward situation. He saw the Allman Brothers one day. Wait, is this after they had Peppermint Incense, incense yeah. out as a, a yeah. single? He, he, he was there after that. And he, I think... They were breaking up. Maybe they were breaking up. And he went out to see the Allman Brothers one afternoon in California. Yeah. With Dwayne Allman still there. And he saw Dwayne Allman. And Ed King is a guitar guy. He loves the guitar. He knew that he needed to go to the South. And that's where he needed to be. And I think Dwayne just inspired him to get out and move. Because he liked the sound, the, the yes. feel. And about two or three weeks before Dwayne passed away. So they gave him a little bit of inspiration, and I think he moved, went to the South, and uh, somebody was faking their band in the South, so they were kind of chasing That's down. That's true, because this is way before communication internet, yeah. and I, I remember a little bit about this. There was another band calling themselves Strawberry Long Clock Tour in the South. And they, they were uh, trying to mimic the band, so they weren't happy about that. And he runs into 1% band at a club along with Mud Crutch on the bill, and he meets Ronnie Van Zandt. So he, Ronnie Van Zandt, Tom Petty, and Ed King are all in the same place the same night. Exactly. Probably 1970, I'm going to speculate. Um, and really, pretty good, pretty good lineup. He told Ronnie, he said, Ronnie, if you ever need me, you know, just give me a call. They talked, they got, they got along really well. He said, just give me a call if you need somebody. And lo and behold, Leon, you know, broke away from the band. And so, a while later... Um, this is during the recording of Pronounce, right? Ed King gets a call from Ronnie Van Zandt, being the bass player. All right. So, Ed wants to come do it. Comes down and joins the band, and of course they finish Pronounced. And Leon comes back during that time, and uh, Ronnie says to Ed, said, Ed, you're just not a very good bass you're player. You're a terrible bass player. You're not very good. But once you be a guitar player, so he did that three guitar attack, get him loaded in there, and he fits in pretty well. No, Ed King, what did Al Cooper call him? A guitar virtuoso. Yeah, and Al Cooper should know. And and the thing about it, I think musically he does fit, but there's some cultural things. There's some cultural things, and he has a, a strat uh, compared to the Dirty Gibsons that he called uh, of the other guys. And, and he, he blends in, though. He does his thing, gives some some harmony vocals, and um, helps create, create Street Home Alabama, which is, you know, pretty good, pretty good part of the band. And as we know, Sweet Home Alabama was actually written yeah, they, they during up the pronounced that. sessions. And he couldn't get it on, Al Cooper couldn't get it on the album before it went out. So they moved to the second helping which should have been the lead uh, single off Second Heaven, but it wasn't. Anyway, that was it. Don't ask me no questions. 
Or yeah, that was, was a single. Was the first single yeah. off the album, not Sweet Home, Sweet Home, Sweet Home Alabama. Who thought that out real good? Yeah, they weren't thinking ahead. But anyway, Ronnie and Ed, those guys knew it was a hit, and it surely was, which lives on today. Yeah, and so cultural, we, we started to get on that just a little bit. And, you know, Ronnie comes from the rough side of the neighborhood, right? And he's used to fighting and pushing and... Be, you know, we've talked about him, he's a little bit of a bully, but that's who he was, and that you know they couldn't have been that way without him because he was that kind of a strong leader. But Ed loved Ronnie. Now, in every interview I've seen... He's a very big fan of Ronnie Van Zandt. And roomed with him on the road, right? They were roommates. I mean, loved him that much. But at some point, he just had all he could take. Well, there was a night, and I think Ronnie, always in trouble, of course, one night on the road, Ronnie and Ed's guitar tech end up in jail. All right, so they get back from jail about ten minutes before the show. So <laughs> Ed's guitar has not been teched or checked or tuned or whatever. So he's breaking strings, you know, in Freebird or whatever. And Ronnie, not too happy about it, started to give Ed some crap. So Ed said, "Hasta la vista," and he hit the road. And, and really and truly, that was it until the tribute tour. Yeah, and he came back for the tribute tour, even though he had some health problems of his own, yeah. dealing with the, some heart issues, and like everybody, I wasn't guess, he, did. Wasn't he diabetic too, man? I don't know. I don't know. Um, he had a heart transplant at one point, but he's just a, just a strong picker. All right, this guy could play. And if you watch his YouTube videos, just a great speaker and guitar collector. You really have to see all the guitars that were in his collection when he passed. He lived in Nashville at the at end, the, right? Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, and I, I I, never met him. The only time I ever saw him was tribute at the tribute tour at the Coliseum in 87. But let's talk about what he contributed to Leonard Skinner. Now, you know that he came in during the recording of the first record and actually got a songwriting credit on one song off the pronounced record, right? It was... Is it Mississippi Kid? Poison Whiskey. Poison Whiskey. Poison Whiskey. Whiskey. He gets songwriting credit. Um, so he's already contributed, and we know that during that time, he came up with the Sweet Home Alabama thing, right? But on the second record, um, he he gets several songs. Several songs. Including written. my favorite one, Working for MCA. Yeah, which is always their lead song. A signature song. If you start a ways. concert, you start off concert, Skinner concert, Working for MCA. Which was also written during... The pronounced sessions. They had, I'm sure, they had lots of songs loaded up because yeah. these guys are working band. They worked all the time. They they bounced off each other all the time. Hell House. And you can imagine the creativity that was started at the Hell House. So on the second record, he's responsible for three or four songs. The third record, once again, the star song on the record is written by Ed King and Ronnie Van Zant. Saturday Night Special. What a great song. You know, and it's a single in its own right. It's strong, and the story behind that song was that Ronnie had come up with some vocals or lyrics to the song, and with something that Ed had melody that he'd come up come up with, and whispered the, the, the first lines to Ed King in his ear. Didn't tell anybody else, and they went to work from there. Another interesting anecdote is that. The second helping record was recorded in Los Angeles, except for one song that was recorded in Doraville at Studio One, their favorite studio, was the Ed King, Ronnie Van Zant Anthem, Sweet Home Alabama. The second record recorded, I mean, the third record, Nothing Fancy, recorded in, in Atlanta, except for one song, Saturday Night Special, Ed King, Ronnie Van Zant, recorded at Studio One, Doraville. Doraville, which was like, sort of like their home studio. It was the best feel for them, I think. And it was on the Nothing Fancy tour that uh, Ed decided for his own sanity, I guess, it was time to move on. He just had enough. And, you know, sometimes you don't. You do. And it wasn't his fault. He was taking crap from Ronnie. And it was more Ronnie's fault than it was his. Yeah. So you can, you can see how he was feeling, possibly. A little disrespected and, and for the, no reason. This is during the time when Ronnie was really wild. And it was a time, because at the time, by two weeks, he had quit drinking. And, you know, anybody just 
gets off the sauce just like that. You go cold turkey. Who knows what's going to happen in that time? Mm. <laughs> I don't want to think about those I times. I don't even know. Um, but so there's more to come on Ed King. I just think it's important to throw that out there, talk about his contributions to the band. Realize they could not have been the band that we know and love without Ed King's contributions. He was, in my mind, as big as Rosner and Collins. He was a silent partner, but a partner he was. Yeah, and and despite all of the antics and fighting and the drinking, he, like everybody else in the band, loved Ronnie Van Zandt. He, he, he just saw the talent and uh, the writing ability. And it's way more than that. Ronnie Van Zant had some type of magnetic attraction. You see the power when he's on stage. You feel it in his songs, his music, and his words. But these guys felt it in their heart. He's a true leader. And and I just, you know, every episode of Leonard Skinner Short should begin and end with Ronnie Van Zant Because he is, in my mind... The heart and soul of Leonard Skinner, I think, in everybody's mind. So, anyway, we're going to do some more on Ed King later. But this is just episode one on Ed King. We'll be seeing you later. Anything else? I think we got it, man. Boy, we love Ed King. And until next time, we'll see you then. <laughs>